Vidyas, uh, as we continue to report right outside the Gyan Wapi Mosque and the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, they're right side by side. They have different exits, different entrances, but right side by side, right behind me there, uh, there is a heavy presence of security. But it's raining petitions, viewers, when it comes to Muslims and mosques. To get you the latest uh, news break that is coming in, three mega monument Wapsi battles are in court shortly. Where I am standing right now, the court will hear the plea on Gyan Mosque case. The verdict on terms of when will the, or if at all, the geography will take place inside the Gyan Wapi Mosque. When will it happen? The date would be announced. The second big thing expected from the Sessions Court in Varanasi today is if uh, uh, the Commissioner, the Advocate Commissioner, which was appointed uh, by uh, the Sessions Court, uh, will he be dismissed because the administration of the Gyan Wapi Mosques wants that he is biased and he needs to be removed. Both of that coming in here, however, there are two other big flashpoints as well that we are breaking. The High Court hearing on locked Taj Mahal rooms at 2 p.m. as well. There is a BJP leader. Uh, he is the media cell from Ayodhya, the head of the media cell from Ayodhya. He has uh, lodged a petition uh, on to open 22 doors of the Taj Mahal because he feels that behind these doors are uh, Hindu relics and uh, Hindu deities. The other big flashpoint, there's a plea on the Krishna Janma Bhumi as well today in Mathura. Three big flashpoints unfolding, Agra, Mathura, Varanasi, all three of them coming in uh, from Uttar Pradesh. I want to cut across right now. I have with me Samarth, my colleague, who's at the Sessions Court while I report right outside the Gyan Bapi Mosque behind me, and uh, Gaurav Savan, who's going to give us a larger picture on the importance uh, of uh, the Gyan Wapi Mosque and what lies possibly inside and the connection to the Kashi Vishwanath Temple and to faith as such. But uh, Samad, coming to you first, any minute now, we're going to get in a word. Two big developments we're going to hear on. Number one, whether the survey, videography survey will take place inside uh, uh, the Gyan Wapi Mosque behind me. Number two, whether the commissioner is going to remain or will be replaced by the court as the administration of the Gyan Vapi Mosque feels he's biased. When can we expect the verdict? Well, Preeti, just a matter of seconds or minutes. The hearing can start any time because it's past 12, now it's 12.05, but I'm reporting from the local court of Varanasi, and I want to show you the security out here, how the security has been beefed up around the premises of this particular local court, and the direction what cameraman Sandeep is showing you is towards the court where the judgment will take place. We were reporting from here since last two to three days when advocates come in, though the Hindu side and Muslim side has been inside the court and the hearing can start at any time. You can see that the policemen are equipped with canes, not just the men policemen, they are also cons women constables are also there. Apart from that, the entire, the entire area is full of advocates because it's a big day, not just for Varanasi but for entire Uttar Pradesh. As you said, three major points. Number one, the advocate commissioner, whether he'll be there or not by now. Number two, whether the Hindu side will be allowed to enter inside the mosque or not. Number three, and the major point is the date of survey, that all these points will be covered as we expect in today's hearing and when it will start, we can assume the decision to come in around 2 p.m. because in the earlier days also, we, we, ex we saw the hearing took place for 1.5 to 2 hours in all those 3 to 3 days. But what is latest is the security has been beefed up at this particular local court, Preeti, and we can expect hearing in next few minutes as well. Yes. Okay. Samad Giba, we was a larger understanding. Today's judgment, is it going to be limited to whether the videography survey can be conducted at the Gyan Bwapi Mosque behind me, number one? Or uh, we're also going to get to know in the judgment whether the five petitioners will be allowed inside because till now prayers inside the Gyan Bwapi Mosque uh, rituals were conducted only once a year. And uh, the five petitioners, all women, want access uh, to the Gyan Bwapi Mosque for religious prayers and rituals on a daily basis. Is that judgment also going to come today? 
this was the only point when in 2021 august the case the petition was filed by by all of them it was said that they want to pray at this part, at that particular shringar gauri sthal on a daily daily basis and that is why the petition was filed but as we know the, it happens once or twice a year so it's going to be worth crucial how the court takes takes it but what is important is the role of advocate commissioner the court will announce whether advocate commissioner will continue or not because advocate commissioner has been saying that he has remained impartial throughout the survey the hindu side the government side and that side has right. also supported advocate commissioner while right. the muslim side so has been claiming two, two big that flash points there two big developments we are looking at right now development number 1 will the advocate commissioner mr ajay kumar mishra be removed because the administration of the gyan bapi mosque feels he's biased number 2 and that's extremely important the administration of the gyan bapi mosque says this is a waqf property with geography is not allowed here but the court the sessions court had instructed the asi to conduct with geography inside the mosque to see whether there were remains of the kashi vishwanath temple as well i want to now bring in our senior executive editor god of savant who's joining us uh, as we continue to show you the expanse right now outside the kashi vishwanath temple a lot of devotees coming in you know god of the fact is um, let's right now for once uh, bifurcate the legality of what we are looking at and the faith aspect of it the kashi vishwanath temple um, in terms of pure faith uh, even when we are talking to locals and you and i have traveled to banaras uh, so many times earlier is that uh, the gyan wapi mosque and it's you know it's quite common knowledge many uh, uh, tell you even colloquially when you speak to them was built over the kashi vishwanath temple in the 1600s by aurangzeb it was only uh, ahilya holkar the queen of indore uh, who nearly a century later built the kashi vishwanath temple right behind it but can you take us through the importance of the kashi vishwanath temple where we are purely talking on the basis of faith you know today the learned judge priti will weigh in whether rule of law prevails if the court orders videography can a mob prevent videography from taking place that's the aspect that the court has to decide once court has ordered videography to be carried out at a particular location can court orders be stalled by a mob that is something that the court will decide in case an individual is deemed as partial on what basis especially during argument when both sides are also open to the idea that the learned judge himself can supervise the process that will take place now as you very rightly pointed out it is believed that in 1669 cruel mughal king aurangzeb ordered the destruction or the desecration of the kashi vishwanath temple and this is a center of faith for hindus why was this demolished what was the order the farman is all there if that temple was destroyed if a mosque was created what lies beneath is something that videography will now reveal that videography that needs to be carried out in toto in its entirety preeti so far only bits of that videography was permitted before a, an unruly mob we are told and india today and samad shrivastav spoke to the videographer himself what did that reveal the nandi bull the ride of lord shiv faces a mosque is that even possible a lot of other hindu motifs were found and samarth can tell us much more about it and india today has those images there so does a mosque actually have hindu motifs and if so then the court will then decide on the next course of action but you'll only cross that bridge when you reach it if videography is carried out without fear or favor priti All right uh, well we are going to be expecting to hear from the court uh, at about 2 pm samarth and gaurav was still with me uh, to get our viewers a larger understanding and i will once again pull in uh, my colleague samarth uh, in this conversation samarth take us down in terms of uh, what went down the objection to videography was raised uh, by the administration of the mosque because they say this is a waqf property videography is not allowed the other objection that they hold is that the commissioner uh, of the asi who's conducting the videography is biased of course there were protests which followed thereafter and possibly that's the reason why uh, what you see is uh, uh, you know uh, 
quite a bit of police right now at the Kafi Kashi Vishwanath corridor. There is, uh, uh, you know, from what I've seen usually, there is a little more police, not that much though, but I believe it's going to be bolstered as we count down to the verdict because last time uh, when the survey was taking place, the objection came from inside the mosque by the administration uh, and the protests were carried out outside as well. Samarth, will you take us through the timeline of this case and what exactly happened? See, it all started on May 6th when the team, the survey team entered inside the mosque and they, the team was with the Hindu side, with the Muslim side, the two two videographers inside. And it all started, they, when they when they were into the Shringar Gauri Sthal, there was no confusion as it went on on a nicer pace. But when it was about to enter inside the mosque or to clear the barricades, the entire controversy erupted and Muslim side erupted and said that they will not allow them to enter. While Advocate Commissioner said that he has got the orders from the local court to conduct the survey and the videography but the Muslim side claimed that you they do not have any you do not have any order regarding the entrance in that particular mosque area where there is Tehkana. The Hindu side wanted to go inside the Tehkana as well as the advocate commissioner to know to do the survey. This was the only part when the day one survey stopped as Advocate Commissioner thought that they will continue on day two and will enter inside the mosque. And on, again, on May 7, the second day, when the team entered inside, there was the verbal spat between the Hindu side and the Muslim side. And also, when they tried to enter inside the mosque, they saw around more than 100 men inside the, mo inside the mosque from one particular community. They encircled the mosque and at that point of time, DM Varanasi was also called in to pacify the situation. And at the end of the day, the survey could not be concluded and they had had to come back just after an hour and since then the application was filed and the case is into the hearing phase and nothing concrete came out till then and also it is it is also noteworthy when you were reporting from Kashi Vishwanath at that particular phase some slogans some communal slogans were also raised from both the sides on day one and day two as well and to for that the security has also been stationed outside at the Kashi Vishwanath temple from where you are reporting and around that particular local court from where I am reporting so this is the thing happening and in between that we spoke to the videographer he claimed very various things including the symbols of Hindu gods, not just on the Shringar Gauri Thals area, but also on the wall of, mosque, of the mosque, where there is a proper bell, which we usually see in temples. It was, it, it seems to be ancient old. So these were the major points revealed by the videographer. Apart from that, we also spoke to the social activists and senior journalists out there. They also showed some pictures and clearly said that there is one Nandi, and Nandi is obviously always faced towards the one of the Jyotirlings or Shivlings. And at that part of area it is in the south side of the of the mosque with the facing towards right. the mosque so these were the points revealed by the social activists and the senior journalists so yeah right all right you know Samad quickly talk us through like once again I will show our viewers my camera person Amit is uh, zooming into what is the Kashi Vishwanath temple right behind us and as you zoom out can you see our viewers if they can easily see uh, the barricading, uh, the barbed wire and if they can see that on the left hand side, this is the boundary of the mosque. You can actually see the facade of the mosque and a part of the dome of the mosque. This is how close both the Kashi Vishwanath temple and the Gyan Bapi mosque are. Some more news break coming in that the order at the Gyan Bapi mosque is delayed. Now when can we hear the order? See, Priti, it seems the order has been delayed, and because what we are seeing that the Hindu side and the Muslim side has also has obviously entered inside that particular premises. But what I can again show you the forces out here; they are increasing with each passing minute. You can see that half of the portion is filled with the Jawans of UP police, as they are stationed at any time the hearing can take place. But what is noteworthy here that the Muslim side and the Hindu side has obviously entered inside the premises and we can expect the hearing to begin any time from now though it has been delayed because the time was 12 p.m. and it's around 12 15 p.m. so you can say it's a bit delayed but we can expect hearing to begin in some time yes Priti. all right so uh, it's delayed a little we possibly hear by about 1 30 uh, 1 p.m. to 1 30 depending how uh, you know is the the sessions court judge uh, will read out uh, the order or if there will be more arguments we will we'll know in a short while from now 
Uh, so about 1, 1.30, I want to bring in Gaurav, uh, our senior executive editor, back into this conversation as I continue to get you. It's, uh, of course, a lot of media, understandably. Uh, it's a big developing story nationally as such as well. I bring in uh, Gaurav Savan back into this conversation. Gaurav, you know, one, there is an issue of faith. Then there is an issue of law on the larger footprint of what this could hold in terms of the Sessions Court ruling. Either way, whether a uh, videography is uh, ordered today and the date is given, that aside, the matter might be referred to a higher court and ultimately it will rest on two factors. Number one, uh, the law for religious the places act of 1991. Number two, the Ayodhya verdict, because the Ayodhya verdict was a landmark verdict and the five judge bench in the Ayodhya verdict had said that Ayodhya will be the only exception and uh, constitutionally, legally, there is no space for any other religious place to be contended with. Fair enough. But Places of Worship Act 1991 is under challenge already. It is being said that it violates the fundamental rights of those who want to pray. This is, a, uh, this is an act that came in 1991. That's point one. Point two, uh, you know, if a superior court or a bigger bench looks at the other side of the story, as some of these, uh, you know, women petitioners have argued, as others are arguing, that it takes away from their fundamental right to pray at a place of their religious worship. You know, it depends on what the court says. Again, it will depend on evidence that is put in front of the court. Court does not go by faith. Court will go by evidence that is put on ground and the way it's argued by lawyers on both sides. And ultimately, it will have to be a decision whether there may be an amicable resolution to, a, to an issue. After all, this is a place of worship for Hindus. It's extremely significant for Hindus. They've been worshipping there for centuries. But it was only a cruel king like Aurangzeb who destroyed a temple and built a mosque. And that is, in, in, in some people they argue, it's a symbol of oppression. Would this country want to move forward with symbols of oppression? Or will this country want to move forward with truth and reconciliation? There was a Somna temple destroyed 17 times by Mahmud of Ghazni, raided repeatedly. Immediately after independence, Sardar Patel, uh, as the uh, first Home Minister of India, had a very, had a beautiful uh, Somna temple rebuilt. There was no, uh, it was, the issue was amicably resolved. Ayodhya issue was resolved once again through courts of law. Now it remains to be seen what's the road ahead uh, on Kashi Vishwanath and as some argue on Mathura. All right, so the court uh, clearly will not go by faith. The court, even as Gaurav pointed out, will go by evidence and the court uh, will, uh, which what most legal luminaries believe, will go by past precedents. The biggest precedent in, uh, when you talk about places of worship, you can't get bigger. Uh, you know, there was a lot of crowd, but you can't get bigger than the Ayodhya judgment. The five-judge bench, uh, in a stunning verdict, has elucidated very clearly, not just quoting the, the law, of Places of Worship Act of 1991, but also elucidating further and passing a, a judgment in terms of observations saying from here on, this should be the end of all disputes. Uh, this is a huge anomaly, but this will not be followed through in other places of worship uh, because there is no space for that constitutionally and legally. Will that precedence be taken into uh, factor? when this, these cases like the Gyanwapi case, like the Mathura Temple case, uh, like uh, even uh, the Taj Mahal case go up uh, for hearing, uh, we'll only know, uh, uh, you know, when uh, the time comes. Till then, of course, uh, it's going to be on the evidence, but there is a big, uh, a huge uh, factor, which also needs to be weighed in, which uh, Gaurav also said. And uh, what you see is heavy police presence. All right, so, uh, all right. Heavy police presence already started uh, to build up here. Uh, the top cops of uh, Varanasi coming in, uh, the DCP, you, yeah, the DCP and, uh, all right, uh, the other, other big top cops from Varanasi coming in to take a look if everything is peaceful. The last time around there was a skirmish in terms of slogan airing. But, uh, the Battery of India Today reporters are boots on ground uh, in the studio, continue to get you the latest uh, 
I have Samarth Srivastava who's joining us right now from the session squad. We'll hear from the session squad in just about an hour's time inside <coughs> the studio. <coughs> breaking the verdict uh, down for us is Gaurav Savant, our senior executive editor. Nabila Jamal also joining us uh, to get us various inputs as it develops around the story. You can now <coughs> see viewers CRPF uh, has been called in. Uh, additional deployment, CRPF in any case is stationed uh, at the Kashi Vishwanath uh, temple. Additional deployment has also been called in and understandably so. It's uh, a sensitive issue. It led to a small uh, communal flare-up in terms of just slogan airing uh, the last time around. Uh, the administration doesn't want to leave anything to chance. But coming back uh, to the matter of faith, uh, the fact is, viewers, and uh, nobody, you know, you talk to in Varanasi will deny it, that there are relics, Hindu relics, inside the Gyanbapi Mosque. Many would tell you on their face. Uh, <clears throat> there are uh, remains of the Kashi Vishwanath temple as well. It's common knowledge that uh, there was a mosque that was built on a temple. But will that be enough right now uh, to go ahead and move forward in terms of what we saw? Uh, in Ayodhya, well, only time will tell. But I want to cut across back to Gaurav Sawant, uh, our senior executive editor, to give us a larger understanding on the faith attached to the Kashi Vishwanath temple and possibly uh, through that, uh, the Gyan Wapi Mosque. Gaurav, in terms of places of worship, this would be as big as it gets when it concerns the shrine uh, where Lord Shiva is concerned. One of the 12 Jyotir Lingas, according to the Hindu Puranas, supposedly here. Preeti, I mean, go back to the Skand Puran. The Skand Puran talks about Gyan Koop, the Gyan Vapi, the well of knowledge. Uh, you know, if you take it, Metaphorically, you take it actually, uh, there's supposed to have been a deep well, the purest water, the sweetest water, uh, an ancient center of learning predates Islam, uh, uh, you know, and, and this is where a lot of people, a lot of scholars from across the country uh, came for education. Kashi, anyway, Preeti, you and I have reported Kashi uh, extensively before 2014 elections, 2019 elections, and this was... The Avinashi Kashi, a center for spiritual learning, a center for education, and you have a number of temples there. This was destroyed, uh, you know, the, the, the temple here, the Kashi Vishwanath temple was destroyed even earlier, but each time it was rebuilt. Uh, Ahilya by Holkar, uh, you know, after Aurangzeb is uh, said to have destroyed uh, this, this uh, beautiful temple in 1669, April 1669, well, a century later she did rebuild it. Why did Aurangzeb destroy it? Uh, the Farman, if you read, and again, it's a, it's a matter of court uh, documents, because there was education that was being imparted by scholars to people from books that Aurangzeb did not agree with. It is also being argued that Dara Shiko, the more learned of the two brothers, the more liberal, the real sense of the word liberal, the real sense of the word secular, as some may want to argue, Preeti, Dara Shiko, who used to study here, he gained knowledge here. Not only was Dara Shiko, Aurangzeb's brother, murdered and butchered, his head was cut off by Aurangzeb. He also wanted to destroy the place where knowledge was imparted and Kashi Vishwanath temple was desecrated and a mosque was built uh, on, on top of the Kashi Vishwanath temple. So uh, all of this evidence is in court. It will be argued, uh, uh, you know, whether a temple needs to be built here or not or whether worship would be permitted to these five ladies, including Rakhi Singh, Lakshmi Devi, Sita Sahu and other petitioners round the year, unhindered access would be given to them or not. But that... You reach that bridge only when videography is carried out and a mob did not permit videography at that site. The so step one, will court be, a, you know, go ahead with the court appointed commissioner? Will they permit videography? And when will that videography happen? It's one step at a time, Preeti. Okay. Um, you know, okay, Gaurav, uh, thank you for taking us through what has been... Uh um, the background of, in terms of the deep-rooted faith where Kashi Vishwanath Temple is concerned. And one can clearly see that, you know, as you walk through the streets of the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, it's a very hot Varanasi afternoon, and as we wait uh, 
uh, you know, for that verdict to come in, practically every shop is the way that you see it. Uh, these are shopkeepers uh, right outside the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, and all you see are relics uh, which represent uh, uh, no one else but Lord Shiva. The Damru there, uh, that's the prasad for Lord Shiva. Uh, I'll ask, uh, you know, right here. This is uh, the Kashi Sindur. This is used uh, uh, for devotees who go take a basket with it uh, to uh, the main uh, sanctum sanctorium. So this is practically all of Kashi, all of Banaras and all of Varanasi right now. We're going to continue to get you the latest, but viewers, um, once again, you know, as we um, count down to the verdict coming in, I want to, you know, elucidate a point or two. Number one, it's coming in through a Sessions Court, viewers. Um, the shopkeeper has also sent, kya hai dada hai? Bhasma, Baba ka Bhasma. Bhasma, Babuti. That's what you put on your forehead. I remember uh, once Gaurav and I had come and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'd gone and visited the Kashi Vishwanath temple. We'd used this. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of locals that you talk to extremely proud when they talk about the heritage of the Kashi Vishwanath temple. But, you know, what is really understandable is I try to speak uh, to the local shopkeeper here and it's, it's interesting and I must give this anecdote. He's uh, talking to me about, uh, you know, Lord Shiva, everything, but he doesn't want to talk about the Gyanvapi. Because somewhere down the line, viewers, what it's done, whether we like it, we don't like it, but it's an age-old matter, and it's once again flared up, and possibly the proverbial line which has always existed between two communities in Kashi uh, Vishwanath and the city of Varanasi has also come to the fore again. Many not very comfortable with that. Uh, and of course, uh, right now the matter is uh, under legal purview. But with what I was saying earlier, it's a sessions court, uh, it's a local court. Whatever has been decided today by the learned judge, could be and possibly will be taken to higher courts. Uh, it will be viewed primarily, solely under the purview of law viewers, uh, not faith. Uh, faith can be an argument, but uh, evidence and faith. And on to that evidence, where you talk about relics of the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, uh, right now, there you have it. These are the cops. I'll just show you. You know, lot so much is happening. The cops coming in, uh, speaking to the local shopkeepers, asking them, uh, whether everything is calm, everything is peaceful. SHO. So you have the SHO uh, who's uh, come right now um, asking the shopkeepers if everything is uh, peaceful. But importantly, I have to show you. It's a hot, hot day. Bhot garmi hai na, sir. Hum bhi dari bethe. Bhot garmi hai. So even... Sir, hamari bhi. Jaldi karayi <laughs> so the cops and us pretty much on the same page when it comes to the heat. It's beating down on us. But once again, let me 